This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. And as a quick explainer, in case we missed some very late breaking news, we're actually filming this a whole day early because we're off to drive a Cadillac Lyric at a launch event in Utah right about now. When I was growing up in the UK, the term white van man was an oft used and well known way to describe the multitude of poorly driven white Ford transit vans that terrorised the UK's roads during work hours. These vans were pushed to the limits of what their engines and drivetrains could handle and sometimes wore some pretty nasty battle scars from their life on the road. But this week a new white van was unveiled that would probably make any white van person weak at the knees. Meet the Ford Pro Electric Supervan, an all-electric Ford e-transit retrofitted with a 1470 kilowatt all-wheel drivetrain. Just like the Mustang Mark E 1400, this is built for speed and speed only, plus drifting, with a quad motor setup and 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. It'll go up the hill at the Goodwood Festival of Speed this weekend, piloted by Romain Dumas. It's good to see Ford's long tradition of making supervans going all electric. Most EV owners can go several days, maybe even a week or more, without needing to charge their EV, especially if they have a relatively new EV with a long-range battery pack. But a study from the University of Geneva published in Nature Energy shows that there's a long way to go before non-EV drivers understand the difference between how far EVs can go and how far they think they need to travel. Polling 2,000 drivers in the US and Germany, the study showed that 30% of respondents believed EVs EVs do not have enough range in their battery packs to cover their daily driving habits. Yet 90% of the trips described to the research team could be covered in EVs with ranges of less than 200 kilometers. That's 124 miles of range, meaning most respondents could buy any EV on sale today and be just fine. It shows that there's some serious educational outreach needing to be done by EV advocates. Tesla's Sentry Mode, the much lauded feature that turns Tesla's onboard cameras into security systems when parked and dash cams when driving, is something I wish every car had. It's helped Tesla owners avoid blame during contested accidents, and it's helped Tesla owners find out exactly who prang their car or tried to vandalize it while it was parked. But in two different parts of the world, there's an attempt to stop Tesla owners from using the feature. The first is in Berlin, Germany, where the head of security for the local police wants to ban Teslas from coming near police stations due to claimed, quote, data security concerns. Meanwhile, in China, Teslas will be banned from entering a coastal resort for two months since that is where the annual PRC's summer party leadership conclave will take place. Given just how many devices now have cameras in them, this all seems a little overkill. When an automaker wants to take a concept car prototype or even a limited production car to an event, they're usually loaded onto a transporter and taken there by truck. But Mercedes-Benz used a recent trip to Silverstone for the UK Formula One Grand Prix, which was sponsored by Mercedes-Benz this year, to see if it could break a new record for its ultra-efficient Vision EQXX prototype. Leaving Stuttgart, Germany, with a fully charged battery pack, the Vision EQXX drove 1,202 kilometres at 700 and 47 miles to Silverstone, UK on a single charge, averaging an astonishing 8.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's 133 watt hours per mile. Sure, its average speed was a little slow at 83 kilometers per hour, 52 miles per hour, but it managed to break its previous record by 194 kilometers. Talking of ultra-efficient vehicles, Aptera has confirmed this week that it signed a multi-million dollar deal with European in-wheel motor company Alafe for the motors it needs for its upcoming solar electric car. 
The deal, which Aptera says is worth, quote, several hundred million euro, end quote, will see Alafe ramp up production at its home base in Slovenia for the 50 kilowatt in-wheel motors that Aptera uses in its SEV. Then, as part of a second phase of production, Aptera will work with Alafe to establish a new production line within Aptera's U.S. production facilities, ramping up motor production in the U.S. to make a 100,000 vehicle annual production capacity a reality. Light and efficient, the in-wheel motors and distributed drivetrain system developed by Alafe will be featured in every Aptera, either with two or three motor configurations. Brightdrop, the all-electric delivery vehicle company owned by General Motors, has delivered the first batch of Zevo 600 delivery vehicles to FedEx. Originally known as the Brightdrop EV600, the Zevo 600 vehicles are based on GM's Ultium platform, meaning they benefit from 800-volt system architecture and 800-volt, 350-kilowatt DC quick charging. While the first batch of vehicles have been delivered to FedEx fleets across Southern California, expect FedEx FedEx fleets across the US to slowly convert to electric as more Zevo 600s come off the line in the coming months. Right now, the chip crisis is limiting total production output, as is GM's battery supply chain. But with Ultium's new dedicated battery facility due to go online next year, it shouldn't be that long before this electric fleet dramatically explodes. When a new electric vehicle rolls off the production line, one of the first things it gets is a rapid charge, so it's ready to be driven. You see, battery packs aren't fully charged during production for safety reasons, and so rapid charging also helps to make sure everything's OK. And to power that charging, Rivian has just announced its plans to build a large-scale wind turbine at its normal Illinois production facility. At 2.8 megawatts in peak power capacity, it will join the already massive 783 kilowatt peak solar canopy at the Rivian facility that's due to be turned on this summer. While the proposal does have to meet approval from town councils, and I'm sure there will be some NIMBYs opposing the 510 feet tall structure, even though its massive noise output will be 42 decibels, about the same as a refrigerator, I think ultimately it will be okay. Given the number of jobs Rivian brings to the town, I think planning permission will ultimately be granted. Plug and charge, the system that allows you to turn up at a compatible quick charging station in an EV, just plug in and charge with no smartphone or RFID tags required, is quickly becoming a must-have feature for new EVs. Ford's Mustang Mark E and F-150 Lightning have it, as does the Porsche Taycan, many Audis, and thanks to an over-the-air update, so too soon will Volkswagen ID models. But this week, General Motors announced that every new GM EV, including everything from the Hummer EV and Cadillac Lyric, through to the 2023 model year Chevrolet Bolt EV and Bolt EUV, will come with plug and charge as standard. Initially, it looks as if GM will be working with EVgo to activate the system. And while I would expect Electrify America to be added to the list, the press release curiously does not mention it. In a supplemental part to the interview he gave with the Tesla Owners Club of Silicon Valley, Tesla CEO Elon Musk confirmed that Tesla's final Cybertruck design is quote unquote, finally locked. It's now been three years since the Tesla Cybertruck was originally unveiled, with initial production promised for the end of last year. But we've seen Tesla push that back multiple times, with the most recent promise from Elon Musk putting the first vehicles rolling off the production line in mid-2023. In a very candid discussion of Cybertruck development, Musk noted that Tesla could not have produced the vehicle any earlier due to the chip shortage, but also admitted that, quote, we got too carried away, end quote, with various iterative designs for the same. The Cadillac Lyric, Cadillac's first all-electric car, is getting pretty close to its sales launch. And in fact, that's the car I'm driving right now as this video goes live. But limited production of the 2022 model year Lyric, caused by chip shortages and battery supply issues, means that very few people will get to own a Lyric this year. And with both the launch edition of the Lyric and regular 2023 model year cars now sold out, Cadillac has opened pre-orders for the 2024 
Lyric SUV. While I know it's currently 2022, and you might think that it would mean a two-year wait, it's worth remembering that some, but not all, US automakers switch their model years in the middle of the preceding year. There's not actually a 2022 Cadillac Lyric. 2023 models, which come out this year, will be the first ones to hit the streets. I know. I still get confused by it all. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? If you are, and you are in New Zealand, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can charge up with, and of course, how to get charging at home. So follow the link below and start your journey today. Kenyan Swedish company Rome, formerly known as Opibus, has been working hard to electrify Africa, making everything from safari vehicles and buses to motorcycles in order to achieve its goal. But drawings submitted in the EU this week suggest that the company is readying a new production motorcycle that would be sold outside of Africa. Called the Rome Bike, the motorcycle isn't expected to be any kind of long-range ride or performance demon, but the indications are right now that we'll see a dual battery production bike with the ability to take 440 pounds, 200 kilos of payload, up to 124 miles or 200 kilometers at speeds of up to 56 miles per hour, 90 kilometers per hour. Price is the key thing, though, with many rumours suggesting such a vehicle would be super affordable when compared to everything else on the market. And finally, over the last few years, many of us in the EV world have watched as Elon Musk has become a little more vocal about politics and the world around us. Elon's Twitter stream has increasingly shared opinions that appear to be pushing his political views right of centre, and he's dived in with tweets in recent months that we consider both homophobic and transphobic. He's also increased his attacks on the Biden administration and Democrats in general. And after announcing he would vote Republican in the next election and confirming he voted in a recent primary for a candidate who is known to oppose the LGBTQ plus community, we found out earlier this week that one of Elon's twins has come out as a trans woman and has opted to change her name and gender marker legally, eschewing her father's last name in favour of her mother's. We had planned not to mention this in our show, but we also learned this week that as part of Tesla's recent layoffs, not one, but two employees who led Tesla's LGBTQ plus policy and diversity team were laid off with no specific reason given. It could be an unfortunate coincidence, but with Elon now outrightly declaring society is being spoiled by a quote-unquote woke mind virus and urging people to have more babies, well, it doesn't look good to at least half of the voting population. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero Certified Renewable Electricity Company? It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you will wean New Zealand off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more awesome content, as will Gav, but until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Good day. See you next time.